Now, there are quite a lot of Warframes that offer great synergy with the run and gun style of combat. Now, obviously, I'm not going to list all of them, as you could imagine why, but instead, what we have seen lately is a shit in our builds due to these new Emerald Archon shards. See, with these equipped, you can increase the maximum corrosive stacks possible. For those unaware, corrosive as an element weakens and strips enemies' armor up to a maximum of 80% at a maximum of 10 stacks. You see, with just two of these Emerald shards equipped, you can reach full armor strip guaranteed. This means those typical run and gun builds are even stronger due to this. Shooting and fully armor stripping enemies is such a game changer for this type of playstyle, making it even more effortless to use today. But what if you don't have these shots? It's quite an investment to obtain them, and early game players won't be able to go and reach this stage for quite a while. Enter Hydroids. In the Abyss of the Gaff update, Hydroid received a rework, and this didn't go sorely unnoticed by the community. You see, his change is truly the definition of zero to hero, but why exactly is all of this important? Hydroid's passive change went from spawn in a tentacle, in which could grab enemies, and in my opinion, basically doing nothing, to now buffing the corrosive status element in which usually begins at a base of 26% to now practically double in it to start at a base of 50% just by damaging them with an ability or a weapon he equips. This now means whenever he reaches a maximum of 10 corrosive stacks, he will fully armor strip enemies in his path, giving him arguably one of the best passives in the game right now. Now, I always saw Hydroid as a zone-related Warframe and old habits die hard. But what I failed to see with his rework was just how much better his newest ability actually was. So let's go ahead and review it. Hydroid's third ability is called Plunder. Whenever Hydroid casts this ability, he siphons armor from all nearby enemies. This staggers and armor strips them, but also gives Hydroid bonus armor per enemy and per consumed corrosive status effect. So overall, his survival just got a bit better. Now to add to this, and the most important part to take away, is not only does it add to his survival and defense, but it's also adding a massive corrosion damage increase to his equipped weaponry. And let me tell you, I looked at him wrong because I completely underestimated just how strong this combination is between his passive and his new ability, making him an absolute monster he deserves to be within Steelpath content. Hydrate, as of right now, is one of the best running gunners to pick up. As you can see, pairing him with certain weapons that have things like high fire rate and a good amount of status too, also yields absolutely destructive possibilities. And this is without the need for any of the new Emerald Archon Shards neither. Just raw, squishy, tentacle fun. Right, right, guys. Now all we need to go and do is throw in another subsumable ability which helps us. The likes of Rhino's Roar, Mirage's Eclipse, or even the meta-loving Grendel's Nourish is one to add and finalize your build with. So take whichever suits you and slot it in. I'd recommend replacing his fourth ability to fit any of these abilities in, but each of their own. Put it wherever suits you. All right then, Clark, enough yapping. What about a build? Okay, so let's start things off with strength, because this is the first thing you're going to want to focus. You see, plunder and your subsumable ability are both going to want to increase this first. After all, more damage means faster kills. Can't be killed if the enemy's already dead. Good stuff. Duration is your quality of life go-to, so find that sweet spot percentage and push this value up, allowing you to focus more on your gameplay and killing enemies, and less focus on your rotations. Now, range isn't something that you really want to hurt. Usually in run and gun builds, you can actually be quite selfish and keep your range percentage low. However, do keep in mind that Plunder does have a cast range, so you can hurt it, just don't hurt it too much in my opinion. And then finally, we got that efficiency. Now, as I always promote whenever showcasing builds, this is forever a stat that showcases what you really have available to you. If you're newer to the game, you can put some increases in this efficiency field like Streamline or maybe even Fleeting, for example. Otherwise, if you did go ahead and subsume Nourish like I did, then your KPM return is high and enemies are likely to drop even just one energy orb. That is going to be a collective energy that gets multiplied, making our build very sustainable and not having energy issues. Now, do go and keep in mind, there's a lot of other energy routes that you can go and take, whether it be the combination of Blind Rage, Prime Flow, Equilibrium, or running Xenuric Energy School. Whatever suits you, please go ahead and mess about with your build until you can find a comfort for what works for you. 
Now, I am using his plunder augment. However, I don't think it's a necessity by all means. If you want to, you can go and squeeze it in there, but keep in mind it's optional. So you don't have to take it if you don't want to, or if you don't even have it, it's okay. Now, as for his arcanes, I personally would take one offensive and one defensive. Unfortunately, it's not a heavy shield gate in playstyle. At least my build isn't as of right now, which means effectively our survival will worsen as we play further into endurance missions. You see, health, armor, and damage reductions will always fall off in the end. So taking an arcane like Blessing just gives us a little more room for error in the defensive department, whilst an arcane like Molt Augmented gives me bigger returns in the offensive department. You see, arcanes are more about what you own, and I realize not everybody's going to have everything available to them. So take what you can afford to slot in here, I'll put some other arcanes on the screen, and just mess about with them. Archon Shards are still relatively a new system to Warframe, and we don't exactly always have plenty of them to spare and plenty of them lying around. However, I would actually keep it simple for this style, utilizing Crimson Shards for either strength or duration increases, or even the likes of Amber Shards for a great amount of utility provides, such as starting energy, park of movement speeds, and quicker car speeds. Now, if you do want to go and branch out to the other shards, and we're specifically talking for like running gunning type synergies, they're not as specific to general usage. So you can go and do them, but this is what I kind of see these other shards as. So you can go ahead and take emeralds. This mostly synergizes with toxin-related setups and builds that are catered around to running the gunning. The topaz arcan shards focus more on secondary critical root weapons. And then finally, the violet synergize more with like specific electric-related setups for primaries. So my advice here is find the weapon or weapons that you enjoy most when running with hydroids, then center the shards around that playstyle. Alrighty then, Clark, what kind of weapons do you recommend. Firstly, this is completely subjective. There are hundreds of weapons to use, but I will show you one example of a primary and one example of a secondary to give you an idea of what I'm currently enjoying. Up first, we've got the Torrid Incarnate, and this weapon has been a fan favorite, but I won't lie to you. It wasn't quite my favorite. However, when I have paired this with Hydroid, oh boy, has this definitely made me enjoy the combination a lot more. So the build that I have for the Torrid is centered around a hybrid setup. Damage, multi-shot, criticals, and elemental focused on viral combination to pair with a scaling damage mod like Hunter Munitions gives this weapon plenty of room to breathe when it comes to killing against scaling enemies. Now, by all means, this isn't exactly min-max because you see, I am running Nourish, so I can get viral from that. So feel free to mess about with the mods as you play please. Regardless, it is one that can legitimately melt steel path lure enemies level 200 like a hot knife through butter. And I mean, it is absolutely effortless. Give this a try for yourself or for anybody who enjoys secondary weapons like myself, the Occupore. And yeah, guys, it should be no surprise that the Occupore would be even more impactful in the hands of a Warframe like Hydroid, but here you go. The more specifically important part to mention here is that the Occupore really does require its augment to get the most from it. This partially reloads the magazine on enemy kill, and with enough damage available, you can keep its uptime alive for an extremely long time, basically requiring you to never reload, whilst also benefit from crit chance and crit damage per active tendril. It's just a very, very gross augment. Try and get it if you can. The catch is though, is that the Occupore isn't exactly designed for single target purposes. So although it can melt down Eximus units, it doesn't always do a fantastic job of acolytes, for example. Either way, it's one of my go-to guns to run with, and it works great in the hands of Hydrates. Alrighty then, so how should I go ahead and play this build? Now then, if you did go ahead and take and subsume in Grendel's Nourish ability like I did, start off by casting this ability first. Kill a couple of enemies and it should yield you with an energy orb or two on their deaths and this will instantly get your build snowballing with a good amount of energy. However, if you didn't take Nourish, you can still rotate and apply Raw or Eclipse first because you see, this build is still about increasing your damage to mow through enemies first. Kill them before you set up anything else. Now, plunder those enemies ahead of you but more importantly, try to apply a few corrosive stacks on those enemies first. You see, your plunder ability gives you better returns to enemies already affected by the corrosive element. So either use your weapons without killing them or an ability or two, then plunder away and become the real monster. Now, if you do want to go and group up some enemies, you can go and use his second ability, Tidal Surge, or better yet, use it for movement to get around the map nice and fast. It's a good ability, and even its augment can be thrown into your build 
Seal 2 if you want to benefit from the status cleanse that it also has. Either way, that's up to you. Now, when all is said and done, make sure that you have your main weapon that you want equipped. And now just watch enemies weather the corrosive storm that is Hydroid. An absolute breeze of a build to get the job done. Hydroid is in an amazing position right now. He really doesn't need a huge investment to get snowballing. And if your main goal is to walk through endgame steel path content, then you found your best boy to run and gun with. Alrighty then, guys, that's going to be about it from me today. But a friendly reminder that if you did enjoy today's video, hit the like button and share the video with your friends. If you're new to the channel, come subscribe as always. I'll be catching you guys again in the next video.